welcome to the Crafty Bee Company where we create beauty and order in a chaotic world. Today this video is going to walk you through seven quick steps for people who have um, a fear of tackling clutter. It's very simple. It will give you the confidence that you need in order to tackle small projects and then teach you how to build into bigger projects. I do have some links below for the guide to walk you through this if you're interested in that. The very first thing that you need to do is choose which project you're going to start with. I personally would go with something small like a drawer in a desk or in your kitchen or a junk drawer. And the reason for that is because there are fewer things that can fit in there. It's a smaller space and you can walk through these steps without tackling a ginormous project that you just feel really overwhelmed. You need to then decide um, about setting goals. When you set goals, you need to decide how many minutes per day are you going to work on this project? I would say no less than 15. If you are able to tackle in a half hour, that would be ideal. If you feel like you have the stamina to go up to an hour, great. But if you're not used to organizing and decluttering, then that may feel overwhelming to you. So feel free to choose something that you are most comfortable with. You also need to decide when you're going to finish this project. So if you are starting on a Saturday, are you going to finish it by Sunday, depending on how big this project is, or are you going to give yourself a week? If you know there are certain days of the week that you can't work on this project, even for 15 minutes or a half an hour, then you need to take that into consideration as well. But let me remind you that once you start, there is um, a step that you clear everything out. So you need to make sure that when you're clearing things, you're not stuck with a huge mess. So you want to think about your deadline for the project. And then finally, your goal is to stay in budget when you're purchasing products. So you want to decide what is your budget? How much money are you willing to spend on this? So as I just said, the third step is to clear the whole space. And I know that sounds really overwhelming, but in order to know what you have, you have to clear everything out, which leads us into our next step, which is step number four. As you're clearing, you're going to sort. There are different categories that you need to do as you're sorting. There is one, which is donate, and that is anything that you have not used in the past six months, but it's in good enough condition that you can give to somebody else, whether that be a friend, a neighbor, family member, or you take it to a Goodwill or a Salvation Army or another donation place. Um, the second grouping will be relocate. And what that means is you're going to keep it. It's in good shape. You need that product, but it's not where it should be. So you need to decide where to move that, whether it be um, it doesn't belong in the kitchen and it belongs in the linen closet or you had something that was in your bedroom, but you figured now belongs in the bathroom. So you need to put a relocate pile. The next group is trash. This is something that you cannot donate, something that's expired or old or broken or is too worn out that you just can't use it or give it to anybody else. And so you have to put that in the throwaway pile and get rid of that completely. The next sorting will be memorabilia. And this is for things that are worth keeping that are true and dear to your heart, but have been living in the wrong place. And we can talk on another time about how to sort memorabilia, but you need to have a safe place that you can keep your keepsakes and um, a junk drawer or a closet may not be that place. So you want to um, take your memorabilia and keep that safe and we would store it in a different way. And then finally, you're going to have your keep pile, which means everything that you have cleared out, um, once you get rid of all the other piles, you're then going to put those things back. And in the keep pile, you're going to make its own categories uh, because you need to then decide what your products are. That takes us to step number five. Once you've determined your keep pile and the categories within that, you're going to have to purchase products. So if you're doing a junk drawer, for instance, and the things that you've kept in your junk drawer, which I really suggest you don't have a junk drawer, but I know a lot of people need that and it's kind of their miscellaneous. So maybe you have a pens, you have batteries, maybe some paper pads and thumbtacks, for instance, for your bulletin board. So when you go to purchase products, you want to sort those out by getting drawer inserts and you need to get sizes that would fit pens, little ones that would fit thumbtacks. Maybe you wanna keep your batteries all in one larger one. So you have to decide how you're going to then sort the piles that you kept. 
Once you get your products and you put everything back in its place, you're done. And the biggest thing that you need to do is celebrate that success. Whenever you are just starting out, it can be super overwhelming, but you need to understand that just like a marathon runner or somebody who is losing 50 pounds, they don't just wake up one day and drop all that weight, or they can't just run over 20 miles without practicing and training. That is the same thing with being productive and organizing. You have to train yourself and the consistency creates a habit. So once you start small, you're going to celebrate that you've done something that has been a struggle for you. Whether that be updating a thing that you were clearing out and maybe you found like really old notepads and you're like, you know, I'm worth this. I can go buy some really cute paper for my drawer now because I celebrate that I just completed this project. Then after you have given yourself something positive and remember we celebrate with positivity, not like taking yourself out and buying ice cream or something that later you'll regret. You want to treat yourself to something that is good for your mental and physical health. But then step seven is to raise the bar. So since you've completed your first small project, you're going to then tackle the next project, which is going to be something a little bit bigger than what you've been doing. So if you did a drawer, you now can step up to maybe a cabinet or a closet. Um, I wouldn't suggest like a walk-in closet, but maybe just under the kitchen sink or under the bathroom sink, a smaller space with more products, but then you walk through these steps again. So you start back at the top where you choose your project, you set your goals, you clear out the whole space, you categorize as you're doing that, get rid of all the things you're donating and trashing and put your memorabilia in the other place and you put your relocate items where they belong and then you sort within the things that you're going to keep, which leads us to products. You have to purchase the products that would be the best fitting for your style, your systems and your space. And then once you complete that, you put it all away and you celebrate that success again. And now you are time to jump into an even bigger project. So I hope that you found this to take away a little bit of anxiety when you're looking at some clutter and you're thinking, how do I tackle this? How do I get rid of this? I have no idea what I'm doing. So if you are interested, I do, as I said, have a link below for a printable that will help walk you through these. And it just gets you thinking that no matter what you're doing and it's something new, you have to set a goal, you have to reflect, and you have to move forward with what worked and what didn't work. And then you will find that you will have beauty and order in your chaotic world. Thank you.